All right. So, um, how to prove things with this? Okay, let's say our claim is for all x. Um, no, I'm gonna do this one. For all, let's say this. There exists an x in the real numbers such that for all y and 6, 22, 19, uh, 96, let's say. For all x and the real numbers for all y in there, x times y equals zero. Or x times y equals x. Do we, oh, do we think this is true or false? False. Ooh, ooh, wait, I have some contention. Uh, the true, why do you think it's true? Uh, I was just thinking zero. Yeah, why not? Look, if you have zero, and you multiply it by anything in here, it's gonna equal zero. So zero times whatever equals zero. So x times that's gonna equal x. Got a graph here. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. So the way you prove this, is we are just gonna call this p squiggly of x. So this is a there exists statement, right? This is the exact same, the exact same as before. So this is an existential statement where the predicate happens to be a for all statement. The proven existential statement true, we find an example. So I'm gonna say, let x equal zero be our example. Now, need to prove that p squiggly of zero is true. But p squiggly of zero is itself a for all statement. is a universal statement. So need method of exhaustion. Hey, by the way, the things that are in parentheses, you guys don't have to write that in your proofs. Like they have the formatting. That's just me telling you guys stuff. So the point is, yeah, so the point is, so, so letting x equal zero, to actually prove the predicate's true, we need to prove this raw statement when you plug in zero. The raw statement method of exhaustion. So consider y and 6, 22, 19, and 96. Then y equals 6, y equals 22, y equals 19, or y equals 96. If y equals six, so if we're dealing with this first case where y equals six, we're just gonna prove all the cases. If y equals six, then um, note x times y is gonna be zero, because x is zero, times six, which is zero, which equals x. So check, x times y did equal x here. When x equals zero, y equals six. If y equals 22, note x times y is 0 times 22, which is 0, which equals x. And we'll do the same thing for if y equals 19. The same thing for if y equals 97. So you have to write it all out, but I'm just saving some time. Therefore, by method of exhaustion, there is an x zero such that for all y in 6, 22, 19, 96, x times y equals x, done. Make sense? So this is exactly the same as before. You just look at, you just kind of write it as a single 
as a single quantifier statement and think, okay, how do I prove or disprove that? And then every method you need to prove, you know, you go, if it's there exists, you need to find an example that proves this true, and you just go down that next layer and go, okay, how do I prove that true? And then you go to the next layer, right? This would work if you had seven quantifiers, 20, whatever, you could still think about it in this exact way and still get the answer. Any questions? By the way, anyone know the significance of these numbers? This is for everyone in the recording. If you can figure out the snippets of these numbers, email me and I will mention your name and give you a virtual pat on the back and say, this person's smart. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, uh, 